Come, you blessed by my Father, receive the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the resu- the sacred mysteries. You are the resurrection and the life. Lord, have mercy. You came to bring us new life. Christ, have mercy. You feed us with the bread of life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, graciously grant that by celebrating these present festivities, we may merit through them to reach eternal joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and John were going up to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer, and a man crippled from birth was carried and placed at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate every day to beg for alms from the people who entered the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. But Peter looked intently at him, as did John and said, Look at us. But Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, and said, neither. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, rise and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leapt up, stood and walked around and went into the temple with them, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response, rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name, make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him, sing his praise, proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength, seek to serve him constantly. Rejoice, Rejoice, O hearts hearts that that seek the Lord. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. Rejoice, Rejoice, O hearts hearts that that seek the Lord. Lord. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. This is the 
day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus, the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people. How our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. Besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had seen, indeed, a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those, those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on further. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is near the evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, as you can see, we're happy to welcome back our seminarian, Tyler, who is with us for a few days, and uh, we're happy to have you, Tyler. Our Gospel today tells the story of, of the road to Emmaus, a very famous uh, moment in Scripture. And it's kind of a, you can just look at this beautiful story and, and see the mass everywhere because you have the greeting from the very beginning when Jesus comes up next to these two who are walking along the way and there's this, there's this exchange of hellos and greetings. That's how the Holy Mass begins. And then there's the, the, the readings. There's the, Jesus opens up the scriptures. They talk about the prophets. They talk about... Um, all these sorts of things, and then Jesus sorts of, sort of gives a homily about the whole thing. And it says that he kind of unpacks for them what was referring to him in the whole thing. And then there's this beautiful breaking of the bread um, and, and the offertory that kind of leads up to that, that you can see there, and, and the breaking of the bread when they, they come to recognize this is the Christ. This is Jesus. And um, the, the Eucharist, we see the sharing of a meal. You never feel closer to folks than when you're having a meal with them. Um, and, and 
that's exactly what we see happening there. But it's Jesus saying, take this, this is my body, this is my blood. And then they're just on cloud nine. But then Jesus gives them, having fed them, he gives them a dismissal. And they say, well, can't we just stay here, you know? But Jesus sends them forth. And so we kind of see a, a foreshadowing, an image, so to speak, of the Holy Mass. Uh, kind of what I was reflecting just a little bit on this morning was that line about, were not our hearts burning within us? And, and maybe just a thing for us to think here about, take maybe a minute of, of, of just silence to kind of reflect on when was our heart first on fire for Jesus? When did our heart first burn for love of our Lord? And um, I just kind of reflect on that moment. Um, I, I would say for me, I was, as I was reflecting in my chapel this morning, I was reflecting on the Easter Vigil when I was a, a, a kid and I would serve that Mass every, every year and from when I was in middle school all the way through college. And uh, there was one of them in particular where I just, I thought, it was just like an eye-opening thing, like, wow. But retreats, all of these sorts of things, like, there's just been so many moments. But, but maybe you just like, what were some of those first moments in our lives where we first felt the burning, the burning in our hearts of love for Jesus? And then maybe, you know, we should share that with somebody today. Let's stand for our prayers. We pray that our risen Christ might help Pope Francis as he guides the Holy Church to holiness. We pray to the Lord. We pray that all baptized folks will rise to new life in Jesus and that the whole world will be baptized and that all of the baptized will joyfully proclaim the good news with their lives. We pray to the Lord. That those who serve at every level of government treat all people with fairness, justice, and compassion, we pray to the Lord. For an increase in awareness to vocations, priesthood, and religious life, especially for the youth of our own parishes in our archdiocese, but especially St. Vincent and St. Joseph, we pray to the Lord. We pray that all of us here will bring Easter joy to every person and situation in our lives. We pray to the Lord. And gratitude for those moments in our lives where our hearts have burned for love of Christ and that we might share those moments often with others. We pray to the Lord. And for the special intentions of the living and for those who have died, especially in this Mass, we remember Philip Meltzer, our Mass intention. We pray to the Lord. Almighty, ever-living God, we place before you these and all our prayers. In your love and mercy, we ask you to answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, that it would become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the divine work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. When the Spirit of God, your heart, and the sacred blessings of the soul, you drink it, you walk up. Wash me, O 
Lord from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race, and be pleased to accomplish in us salvation of mind and body, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your name, and even the heavenly powers of the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, especially those recently baptized. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Matthew, Bartholomew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, Graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven. To you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gift of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, life, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them. Fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Of the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. disciples recognized the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Alleluia.
cuerpo de Cristo. The body of Christ. 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 our lips as food, O Lord. May we possess the purity of heart, that what has been given to us in time may be our healing for eternity. Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that the reverent reception of the sacrament of your Son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia.